Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady checking in with a cottage garden seedling update. Specifically, I want to give you updates on how all the poppies look that were sown before and after the holiday freeze. But I first want to acknowledge and, and just thank the universe. Uh, I feel like I've stolen a day because my flight to Iowa uh, has been rescheduled for tomorrow due to the huge uh, Midwestern blizzard that's happening right now. I want to thank Delta for making uh, flexible travel possible. And I'm super grateful to be at home uh, as a surprise on this absolutely amazing day. It's like in the mid 80s. I know that's not good, but you can still get outside and enjoy it. So let's take a stroll so that we can all get an update on how all of the cottage garden seedlings are doing now that we are in the last week of February. All right, right out here in the front border, you can see the daffodils are in full bloom. Um, look at, this is crazy, but bachelor buttons are starting to have flower buds. I've never had bachelor buttons this early. Obviously this is a self-sown plant right here on the edge. You can see here's a self-sown poppy. Here is a, um, self-sown California poppy, a larkspur right here already bolting, more poppies. Adjacent here is nigella. Y'all, there is a lot going on in this one like square foot corner. It's amazing. Um, you can see anemones, which more are, are starting to open. Old tulips that probably won't bloom. Um, I'm amazed that there are, that the bachelor buttons are starting already. Again, self-sown poppies right here along the edge are really getting a lot of size to them. Here's more nigella. Here's more poppies and nigella. And as we get into the bed, everything is bolting. Oh my gosh, it's going to be crazy to see what this actually looks like in May, because this is usually what it looks like in April. So, hmm, crazy times, there's no questioning. You can see these plants, so compared to my feet, they're getting huge. They're, they're getting like their full rosette size. Here's more bachelor buttons with buds on them. I mean, you can see pretty easily here you know, the larkspur are starting to actually bolt and we have no freezing temperatures in the forecast. It does get cooler, but not cold. I wouldn't doubt that some of this stuff is going to be blooming by the time I get back from Iowa. All right, over here on the south side of the house, I sowed these, I think around January 2nd, and everything's great. I mean, look at how big the California poppies have gotten, and all of these other poppies, I think this is Pep Haver Reese, um, are, are bulking up really well. Um, there's also some Larkspur popping in, so... This border, I'm glad to see it's not as advanced because this is more of what they should look like in February for a May display. Uh, that other border out front, which was all self-sown, is way ahead of schedule. Again, here on the south side of the house, this is actually an Ascholtia from last year and it was severely damaged after the holiday freeze, but I just left it alone. And you can see it's totally recovered. It's quite large. There's actually another one right here. You can see that's a nice, nice big clump. So those are actually sown in 2021, probably fall of 21. All right, here along the back border, all of this was sown before the holiday freeze. And this is what survived. I see I have some weeding to do in this bed. I've got some chickweed and some henbit. Um, but nevertheless, you can see these 
poppies are looking good. The, the lettuce made it through the cold. Um, here is a self-sown poppy. So you can see that's significantly larger than the ones that I sowed sometime, I think in Dece early December. That's what this is. But I'm really pleased to see how these beds here are faring. Uh, you can see over here, a nice mix of the bread seed poppy and the California poppy, Escholtia. Nice, this will be a nice clump. And there's also some cilantro germinating in here. You can see that's this. So those will look great. And this um, feed tank is awesome. You could see, I did cover this for the holiday freeze and the lettuce mixed with the poppies is looking great. Um, this actually looks dry, I should probably water it. Um, the tulips, which I planted this fall, tulips don't tend to really be perennial here. You can get one season out of them and you can always dig them up and refrigerate them. I don't do that. But I'm really happy with how that whole planting is looking pretty advanced, but still very healthy. So it's kind of hard to show, but I think you can see how the left side is full sun and over here gets a shadow. And everything in this bed that was seeded is significantly smaller or like a lot of it actually has just disappeared because it's like colder and shadier over here. So you could see here are some poppies. They're really small. There's an Escholtia, California poppy. And when this first germinated, it had a really good germination rate, but now a lot of it has disappeared. You literally go across the pathway, which is always in full sun. And you can see self-sown larkspur here and then look at how big these poppies are these were sown at the same time so there is a lot to be said for different locations in your garden even just a few feet apart left side full sun right side more shade and the performance of the plants is undeniably different over here, this is all self-sown. And again, this is a California poppy that is from last year. Not sown this season, but the season before, and it came through the cold snap at Christmas. And I'd say that larkspur right there is probably the most advanced that I have in the garden. I mean, it's fully stretched and, and starting to branch and these are actually flower buds they're actually they're visible um so yeah cal this is the earliest that i've ever had cottage garden flower buds i hope they make it i know i showed this walkway on my weekly garden tour but you can see these are all self-sown they're a microclimate area because of all the bottles that hold a lot of heat they also love growing in this Chapel Hill grit, despite the fact that it's super compacted. And obviously a lot of vetch. <laughs> They'll just ignore it. These poppies are growing so fast. I mean, if I get down here, you can see how they're already like a foot tall. I've just, I know I sound like a broken record. I've just never had these plants be this advanced this early. So it's gonna be a learning experience for all of us because I sure hope we don't get a hard frost. And actually with plants being this tender, a hard frost could be like 25 and it could potentially cause damage. Now across the way, these were sown, I believe with the seed class, yes, for sure, that we hosted here in November. And you could see lettuce. All of this was sown obviously before the, the holiday freeze and this is what made it through. So not a ton, but we've got nice poppies forming. A fair amount of lettuce made it through. And you can see lots more poppies all throughout here. 
So we definitely had better coverage from the beginning, but I'm pleased to see how much has made it uh, without being overseeded from the holiday freeze. Now this border along the figs, I believe I did this in mid-January and you can see good germination. Everything is smaller. So this is good because that makes me think it'll be actually blooming for the open garden. Whereas the self-sown larkspur patch there and these self-sown poppies, and these are my largest right now. I bet they're gonna be finished by the time the spring open garden happens. I mean, again, this is elongating. That's, that's got a stalk. It's probably a matter of less than a week before flower buds form. And I think it'll be really interesting because I've got a good mix of both really advanced plants and plants that I think are on the right schedule. Again, these were sown after the holiday freeze in January, whereas these are self-sown and you see how large they are. So this is definitely gonna be a learning experience for me and hopefully for all of you. I just don't think there's a lot that anyone can say nowadays about being certain about plants and particularly as weather influences them because this is uncharted territory for me. I have no idea how these things will do if we do get a cold snap. Um, again, these were planted in January and you know it's amazing how much they've grown since I did the last weekly garden tour I guess I mean that's what warm weather does it, it, it stimulates growth and that's the case also here all of this was sown after the holiday freeze and you can see good termination but again this is the size that is good this I know will be performing at the right time in April and May. Some of these other ones, like you see in here, I'm, I think it's a strong possibility they'll actually be bloomed out by the time the open garden happens on Saturday, May 13th. So most of this bed is self-sown and over here it's almost exclusively nigella. And you can see some of the nigella plants are really large got some self-sown poppies throughout as well also really relatively large size and all of this is self-sown nigella with some larkspur mixed in let's show you the difference here here is larkspur Do you see how the leaves are kind of rounded even though they're very finely cut they're a rounded shape here is nigella and you see how it is more elongated and then all throughout here you see these tiny seedlings these are all baby larkspurs that I sowed after the holiday freeze in, in January and beyond that are a bunch of poppies right here and I did get in here and weed so there's no more velcro weed or a lot less velcro weed than there was and again, I said this in, the, in my last weekly garden tour, but I'm feeling good about this bed and the stage of these seedlings for a May display. Well, I just weeded this bed yesterday and I have a video about that. This is another bed that we did with the seeding class that I hosted here in November. And these plants were impacted by the holiday freeze, but you see there's a good mix. There's larkspur and poppies. There's some California poppies. Um, it'll be interesting. We sowed a traditional larkspur in here or a traditional delphinium. And I'm not sure if they look the same at this stage, whether that's by normal larkspur or if that's actually the delphinium um, from the seed packet. And so you can see a lot of open space here. That's where I came in and weeded. And what I was left with was a large self-sown patch of larkspur, many of which are elongating. And then over here, starting at the peach, which is also in full bloom, this is where the seed class 
the first seed class sewed a mix. So we have bachelor buttons right here. And we have Reese poppies, which you can see look different. They have more of an upright foliage compared to the bread seed poppy, which I don't see any right in front of me to show you a comparison. Here is California poppy with the silvery, very fine foliage right here. And so I think these were sewn around November 12th. Uh, here is the elephant garlic from Wegmans that they planted as well to help protect the plants from getting nibbled. So this is a great, I think this is all looking great. The, there's wheat, clumps of wheat. This is on schedule for April, May display. Aha, I wanted to show you this comparison. All right, I wanted to show you the difference. So this is Pep Haver Reese. The, the poppy that's kind of the World War II poppy. Here is Pepever somniferum, the bread seed poppy. So you can see the coloration is different. The foliage is different. Um, this one has a bit more of a pubescence along its leaf stalks and it's much greener. So that's, that's how you would uh, be able to tell the difference in the two. So what about the poppies that I sewed in containers? They are doing awesome, you guys. Let me turn the camera around and give you a close-up view. So over here, we have the poppies and greens that Abby and I sewed in January in the soil cube bags. We just poked holes in the bottom of the bags and direct seeded in them. And the germination rate is off the charts. Everything is looking great. Obviously, those are self-sown from last year and these are the fresh seeds. I've actually been growing in this bag and this bag. This is its third season with the same soil and every every year I just grow something different in it. Now the uh, poppy and grain combo, the poppies are really small and the grains are growing really vigorously but they are still alive. Same thing goes here poppies are down in there and this proves that my theory about poppies and grains the grains putting out a um, chemical that prevents the poppies from germinating is not true so though that seems to be happening in my big grain wave that's not accurate because you can see the poppies germinated and are healthy they're just getting shaded out and out here to these pots this is my reminder that I have got to get the fire ant killer out they are completely through this entire pot you can see they just sort of burst out they definitely make the the container uh well aerated you can see they go all the way down to the ground but the poppies these are ones that survived the holiday freeze these are the uh pepever somniferum that were sown after the holiday freeze because all the poppies in this pot died now I'm really pleased to show you these pots that I didn't really even try. I just literally threw seeds on top. All of these are growing really well and they don't get any love and attention. They're just back here behind the bench, kind of waiting for summer. But this is very encouraging. And finally, all of the seedlings that we threw or all the seed that we tossed out here in mid-January is germinating and I'm actually amazed at how much has germinated through the mulch. Um, so we've got a mix here. These are cilantro and these are pepever somniferum, the bread seed poppies. And we've actually got some random grains because they were in my wildfire mix. Um, and I see a pea coming up over there. This is gonna be a fun combination but you can see lots of poppies coming up over here in these um, in the native shrub border and you know more growing over there really the whole bed got um, a solid amount of seed and you can see lots of baby poppies coming up here so these were the very last seeds that we sowed for the season so this is going to be um you know kind of a real experiment to understand 
If you can successfully do January, mid to late January sowings for a May display. And all of the poppy seedlings, both California poppy, bread seed, and Reese poppies are growing really well in here. This bed was actually sown before the holiday freeze, and all of this is what survived that 11 degree temperature uh, low. Well, I hope that this video will be helpful to all of you and um, so you can compare what your plants look like. And I certainly look forward to sharing more updates right here from my Zone 7 Central North Carolina garden. Thanks so much for watching, everybody.